I'm here with Benny from Holy Crime. How's it going, bro? Not too bad, man. Yourself? What was the crime you committed? Ooh, damn. Well, uh, <laughs> the, the name itself was a play on the term original sin. Yeah. Original sin? Do you know what the original sin was? Is this a Bible reference? It is. It's oh, okay. Um, in, the, in the first story. Isn't, in the, it, isn't it? Oh, and you're talking about Genesis? Yeah, so like um, Adam and Eve, you know, the forbidden fruit tree, you know, mm-hmm. and God was like, don't touch the tree, and then they did. Uh, I think that was the original uh, sin. Um, so holy crime, I think, is just a play on that, you know? Yeah. I, I think it sounds cool. We're not a religious band, but it just sounds cool, you know? Oh, that's quite actually quite a cool little little back to the... I quite, I quite, I quite like that. Yeah, 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 I've always been fascinated by, like, you know, religious stories and, you know, like... Um, are, you re- are you raised uh, religious? <sighs> I, not not really like my, my grandmother was like heavily mm-hmm. religious um and she put my father through a catholic school but um yeah it, it was never forced on us but it, it was always around you know so and then i would go to stay at my grandmother's house and she'd be you know making me go to church and all that so i was aware of it but i was never you know i wouldn't call myself a religious person really no Okay. Yeah. yeah. So have you like looked into, like, cause I was, I was raised Christian, so I'm not really anymore. Mm. Quite funny. I kind of like push back. And then so as I've been older, not like I'm coming back to it, but it's interesting how like uh, I understand it more. Yeah. And I understand why people, some people need religion. Oh, for sure. Because when I was younger, I was like, that's the dumbest. Yeah. Why, why do you need it? And now I'm like, I understand why some people yeah, might, might, I, might need it. Sometimes I think people just having that um, form of belief and direction just helps them through life too. You know what I mean? So mm. like I, I never, you know, and um, if somebody's religious, I'm, I'm never going to question them. Like I'm fully respective of it, you know, mm. so everybody's different and, you know, it all comes down to personal belief. And, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's okay. So holy crime. All right. You didn't commit a holy crime. All right. <laughs> not, not yet. Not no, yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so the music you guys got, I've uh, listened to, you got three tracks out. Yeah. Um, I was listening to that song play toy kind of made me giggle, giggle a little bit because I, <laughs> yeah. you know, I can, I, the, the message is pretty, uh, pretty, you, pretty, pretty standout. Do you relate to it, mate? Do you relate to it? <laughs> uh, I've never had that full experience myself, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so is this about you or is it about a band <laughs> member? All, all my songs are from personal experience. Yeah. Right. So, um, so you've been a play toy. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's a bit of fun. I, I feel like every young male should experience it at least once, you know? Being a place for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> were, you, were you dressed up in a uniform? That's one no, of the lyrics? No, okay, no. Um, that was that was a little bit of... Um, <laughs> exaggeration. You know, yeah, exaggeration. Issue. They, I never got dressed as a schoolboy, but I, I found it funny to throw that in that there. That is quite funny. Yeah. Some people... I hope people don't actually think that happened. But <laughs> <laughs> like the, That's pretty funny, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it was just sort of a, a tongue-in-cheek. So is this an like, older woman? Or is this a... De- yeah, yeah oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. It was... Um, geez, God, I would have been like... 23 she would have been like mid 40s probably but uh, oh wow look at yeah, you go yeah yeah nice. I know, oh, I know. Wow. um <laughs> it was never going to be anything more serious than what it was but yeah yeah that's uh, but you know um the young buck yeah but you know that song was also um very influenced by like 80s glam metal and that you know and yeah well, a lot of your so your guys stuff is like that 80s rock glam and then your voice kind of reminds me of like creed uh, yeah. Sorry, bro. I, 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 I created create one of my favorite bands. I oh, that okay, all the sweet. Time. I mean, hey, man. Yeah. Hey, you know, I, yeah. I, for a bit, I wasn't a fan. And then it's interesting, like, um, talk about the last podcast with time with music, like, Creed now. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, that's right. Yeah, that, that's, they're, they're all good. That's the thing, like, and everybody's loving them. Like, they've just got back together and they're, they're selling out tours all over mm. and their music's just, the streams are going through the roof and they're mm. really popular again. And um, they were hated for a while. Yeah, they, they, they a, were. A large period of time. I, I like that, what was it called? Butt Rock. That's what Yeah, it's Butt Rock. Creed, yeah, Nickelback as well. Limp Bizkit. And now all three of them are like, everybody's loving them. Yeah, every, and, everyone know, loves all those bands. Yeah. Um, Limp Bizkit. I went to that Limp Bizkit gig. They came yeah, to Yeah, same. That the one a couple of months ago. That was awesome. That was, I was like incredibly surprised at how it good it was. It is funny so. watching like a 50-year-old man talking about Roland. That is. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> but that was that was like a party, man. It was like on a Sunday oh, night. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. believe they had the energy from the crowd and the band. It was, you know. Yeah, it was. I don't think they've been to New Zealand probably in the longest time. Nah. I saw them in, I've seen them in Aussie. Yeah. I saw them in Aussie. Um, that was when they just got back together like all the first time, like t- over 10 years ago and played at like a Soundwave festival. Yeah. That was wild. Yeah, it's... um sometimes I think like Limbiscuit, you can't take them seriously, you know, like they're, mm. they're not a serious band, nah. but sometimes I just feel you need that. You need to be yeah. in a sort of arena, just, just singing stupid lyrics. 
<laughs> with you know thousands of other people and just jumping up and down. You know, how was the? Uh, did you did you be there for the opening band? That Japanese metal yeah, band. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Hanabi. Was Hanabi. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah there was wild. something different. That was yeah. sick. It reminds me of like baby cool. metal and stuff. Yeah, like. I think that's what they're trying to do. And um, I think it was cool that Limp Bizkit brought them over because mm. they could have just picked like another hard rock band or something, you know. But... Or something like a bit bigger yeah, as well. Like, yeah, you know, or, or pick like a Kiwi band or something, mm. but they bought them and it was just a bit of a culture shock, eh, you know. Wild. Just, yeah. yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that's no, cool to experience that. Yeah. All right, so you got the Creed, you got the Creed influence there, Scott. So you like Scott Stapp or like uh, Mike, uh, what's his name, the guitarist, Mike? Mike Tremonti. Mike Tremonti, sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. what happened with that was, um, you know, obviously the glam metal thing um all those singers are really like high pitched mm-hmm. vocals and um I, when i went to do vocal lessons like five years ago i went and i was singing like all these deaf leopard songs and that and the the lady this vocal teacher was like oh look you know your vocals are low you know you've mm-hmm. got a deep voice you're a baritone you need to go listen to a lot of deep singers mm-hmm. and try you know get your skills from them so i went and i listened to a lot of you know pill jam and creed and um, all those sorts of bands in the '90s and that, and that's kind of where I cut my teeth, I guess, vocally. So yeah. um, there's always going to be a bit of that in it. But um, hey, look, I mean, you know, Eddie Vedder and Scott Sapp are both great singers. You know, of course, like, some, like people laugh at their voices, but they're still extremely successful. I feel more bad for Eddie Vedder because he kind of started that. Yeah, yeah, like he did. <laughs> I know, but um, <laughs> hey, look, Pearl Jam just announced a gig, and I reckon that will sell out. You know, so oh, yeah, 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 they're they're bigger New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um. Yeah, uh, people make fun of them, but like it's, they still listen to them, you know. Like it's they're well, they're um, I I you know that Seattle sound because you had a, obviously the grunge bands Nirvana and yeah. then Pearl Jam and then Stone Temple Pilots. Those are kind of the staples. Mm. Was there another one? I can't. Ah, oh, Alice, Alice in Chains. Alice in Chains. Yeah, Soundgarden, so that's like yeah. yeah, Soundgarden. But like um, they all had like slightly different. But Pearl Jam was definitely more of that like uh, like the vocals. Yeah. Kind of every. I feel like every like early 2000s band like yeah ripped they that took off it from that like yeah. really ripped it off yeah, yeah they didn't i think that's why creed sort of got the um the grief is because mm. i think they were the most like that sort of vocal style they mm. were the ones that yeah. just over know, did it, eh? yeah and like um i think they were the biggest as well and everyone knows their songs so they were always going to be picked on the most but um mm. looking back on them it's like there's nothing wrong with the music you know Mm. Yeah, the, the, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's why there's uh Miles. I was a Miles Ultra Bridge. Yeah, Ultra Bridge. Uh, and they're yeah. fucking great. And it's just Creed without Scott. Yeah, Stapp it's without Scott and, Stapp and Miles Kennedy, great singer, amazing you know? singer. Yeah, um, they're fucking awesome. And um, I, but I think Scott Stapp, he sort of like went off the rails a bit, you know, and like mm. he, he his ego got too big. And oh, I think, massive. And, um, yeah, and I'd like there was some stories <laughs> before Creed broke up where he was like going on stage and he would just pass out and all that. Mm. You know what I mean? When you're doing that, I understand that you know. It's not about the music at that point. It's actually about, you know, being a dick, you know, yeah, so like, super egocentric. Yeah. So, um, I think that would have played a part too. You know, he just wasn't a very likable guy for a long time, but they're doing all right now. So yeah. Got sober and, uh, yeah, yeah. like got it together and the band's back and, um, well, it's, it's, um, it's interesting watching cause there's also the argument of like bands get sober and then the music gets worse. It's also, yeah. there's also an yeah. argument for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Creed haven't uh, released any new music yet, so nah. I'm, I'm waiting to see how that sounds. Um, you know. I wonder what they'll do if you like stick to the old stuff or you try and reinvent it. Like it, um, it'll um, be. I'm I'm interested to see sort I, of I which like direction they take. There might be a bit of alter bridge influence going on in there. I think. Eh? Like, um, it'll probably be a bit heavier. Um, who knows? <laughs> but who knows what it's going to sound like? But it'll be interesting. But I hope it's good. Mm. Yeah, I'll have to. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I never thought I'd say it in my life. I'm, I'll look to hear what new Creed sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd ever see the day. Yeah, well, it's I tw- never thought I'd, twenty I'd years on. I remember. Yeah, yeah I, I remember they disappeared from radio, and now I hear mm. them all the time. You yeah, know? Chuck on the Rock. They're cranking up. You know, mm. one last breath, all that. So, <laughs> for it, man. It's for it. It's mm. for it. So, what kind of got you into music? And uh, uh, off the bat, what was uh, what was the moment you were like? You know, I'd like to try and pursue this. Um, I've always been into music, like. Um, as a child, my old man, he used to put me to sleep with the radio playing, you know, just, it was kind of like, it must've helped me fall asleep or something as a child, just having a voice or just something else in the room. So it wasn't dead silent and maybe didn't freak me out or something. As, I don't know. But so years and years, I would just go to sleep, listen to the radio. And so I was always um, like around music and that, you know, my parents loved music and, um, I guess as I grew older, I just started relating to music more, especially as I started becoming a teenager and like going through, you know, hormones and all that. 
I felt like music was a way to express things that I was feeling, you know what I mean? Mm. Like whether it was like an ACDC song and feeling like all happy and energetic with life and just wanting to, you know, show excitement. Or then if it was like, you know, if you're feeling sad or gloomy or something, it could be a sad song, you know, and I, I just, I connected really well with it and just, you know, never stopped. And I, I find it's like a curse, you know, it's kind of like people who are artists in a way, you know, like, I've tried to stop, but I just can't like, you know, it's like my brain just always wants to do music. You know, it's like, yeah. I got that guitar, say something, or if, if I'm going through something, it's like, I'll write a song about it. You know? So I just, yeah, I, I can't help it. I just can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> no. So when did you, when did you start playing guitar? Um, about 11 years old. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's young. Yeah, yeah. It is young. Yeah. Um, we always had guitars in the house. And then I guess when I started getting into music around that time, I just started picking up the guitar and my dad, he used to play when he was a kid and, he just showed me a few chords and, you know, mm. I just, just once I started, I never stopped. Couldn't yeah. stop. Yeah. Couldn't stop there. Yeah. So would you say that, because uh, it's, it's a four piece, you got a lead guitarist in there as well? Yep. Uh, sorry, what was his name? Jacob Stutton is oh, our yeah. lead guitarist, yeah. Yeah. Who's we- a better shredder? Ooh, so, well, it's, uh, it's a tricky <laughs> one. Um, we can both play lead. Like, I'm a, I'm a good lead player as well, but... Um, I'm trying to more focus on vocals. So all our songs now, I kind of just give it to him. I'm like, you mm. take the lead on this. So I think he's probably getting better than me now because, you know, that's his main focus is mm. doing lead stuff. Um, he's a lot more blues influenced. Like his favorite guitar players are like Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton. And then mine are like, you know, Eddie Van Halen and um, Ace Freely and Prince, you know, like all these more flashy kind of, you know, 80s kind of style stuff. So, um probably him though yeah <laughs> to answer the question yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool yeah, you guys definitely yeah like I, I listen to the music it's like definitely uh, yeah i'd uh i wasn't really sure what was going on in a couple of the songs like, it sort of has like it's like it feels like there's a structure but there's not it sort of feels like it like kind of goes off on those like instrumental tangents yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you guys have like the solos and like noodly parts come back to some vocals and I, yeah, I was like oh this is a uh, I'm not, that's one, I'm really sure what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we, you know, the other songs are still in early stages in that, so. Oh, yeah, you've only got a couple out, so I guess, yeah. are you going to, I'm assuming the next material you've got is more refined. Um, well, we've got an EP coming out in about a month's time. There's a few more tracks on there, and um, yeah, like, it was, I sort of look at this EP as, like, the, the foundations of the band, you know, like, when we were just finding our feet and that, you know, like, um and just our style and what works together. I think we're a lot better as a band now, you know, mm. like we kind of know what works. Like our drummer, for instance, he's a metal drummer, you know, he like loves all the um, the heavier groups. And so he'll come in and we'll be doing like a slow song and yeah. he'd be going crazy doing like middle fills and that, yeah. you know, or like double kicks. And yeah. um, he's now starting to realize what songs they suit, what songs it doesn't, you know, so yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but we never sort of just stick to one style. You know, I, I wouldn't say we fit into one particular category. We just, you know, we'll do whatever we feel like, I guess, you know. Sure. You reckon it's going to continue on that sort of 80s rock sort of blues influence? Um, or you want to try and I, I branch prob- out? Probably, yeah, because um, it, it comes down to just the, the musicians in the group, you know. So, like, I, I'm always influenced by 80s. So, I guess all the songs I write will kind of be structured similar to 80s music. And then our guitarist, Jacob, he's, you know, obviously influenced by classic rock and classic guitarists. So um, that comes through when he does his parts and that, you know, and yeah, I, I guess it will. I bought a synthesizer, actually. So oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's going to be definitely a few more 80s songs coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some like, yeah, some Van Halen influence in there with the synth. Yeah, yeah well, um, the guitar I play, my main guitar is actually an Eddie Van Halen model, you know. I can't play as good as him, but... um. Mm. I, I love doing those like dive bombs and whammy stuff, you know, I just, I just think it sounds so cool. But anyway, um, <laughs> no, it's, also, but it's, it's, it's also different as well. Like not many other bands in the scene are doing stuff like that, you know, so it kind of. Doing dive stuff. bombs, you mean? Like but, dive bombs. Dive bombs, but also just like sort of 80s classic influenced music, you know. Well, uh, what was that band? Oh, fuck. I played a gig of them years ago. Oh man, I told you, there was one band who would, uh, I remember did, did love that. They're like a Motley Crue kind of. Um, sort of band was it were they were they like based in new zealand yeah in auckland i played um, i used to play it dang they're like a staple for ages um, but i cannot remember them right now dollhouse so it's, it's not helpful no nah, not them black alpine 
Uh, oh yes, kind of them. Um, I didn't think yeah. of I think of them, but they were a mm. little bit heavier. Yeah, uh, leather tattoo. Uh, the, no, not leather tattoo. The ah oh, man, I used to know the guys. Oh, uh, oh it's just so long ago. I can't remember. But that, but that there was another. Um, I have to think about it. But there was another band that. So, so I don't know. There's been a few. Like yeah. I, I've seen a few. Yeah. Um, the 80s stuff but i guess at the moment yeah there's a lot of like punk revival at the moment i've seen yeah punk revival and um sort of uh guess kind of really like alternative stuff and then metalcore sounding stuff you know like um i don't know i guess you gotta play to your strengths you know i think it just comes naturally to us to do that sound so we're just you know we gotta work with it yeah sure sure so no 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 breakdowns in the near future oh no we we definitely will <laughs> do some heavier stuff yeah um um, I mean, there was a lot of great heavy music in the eighties too. Don't forget, sure. you know, and like well, even all those bands like Van Halen, Motley Crue, they still could get pretty heavy. So yeah, we're, mm. we're um, and our drummer he always pushes us to do heavy stuff. So yeah, we will be. We've got a song coming out actually in the next month called Snake Tattoo, and that's um, that's probably our heaviest song we got so far. But yeah, that's that's when our drummer brings his metal influences in, you know. So cool. Yeah, um, there's all sorts. <laughs> Can't keep up, but we're trying to make it all work in like one particular blend. Yeah. Sure, sure. So uh, I, I saw uh, one of your clips. You, you did a recording with uh, Ruben Roundtree. Mm. Is that right? Do you know him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know uh, him? Yeah, I know him. Yeah, oh, I went really? to. He used to be a tutor at um, SAE when mm. I was there, a long time ago. But um, yes, yeah, so I saw that. So he produced your stuff. He what, produces. What? He produces everything that we everything. do. Everything, uh, except for Crystal. We didn't do that, but he's done um, Play Toy, Noah Dam, and he's doing the EP coming up. And we'll probably. Stick oh, cool. Around. How'd you get in touch with him? Funny enough, through work, so like I'm um, doing a builder's apprenticeship with my old man, yep. and um, he was our plumber. Oh. Yeah, and he came <laughs> around, and, he, and then um, we just ended up talking about music, and he was like, oh, like, you know, I, I do producing, I've got a studio up, you know. Buzzy, I and, know he's um, a plumber now. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a plumber, obviously more money in plumbing, I think, than um, audio engineering. For sure, for sure. Yeah, um, <laughs> and, um, but man, he's awesome, like he's got this little home studio up in Go Island, I don't know if he's ever been up there not never not you know, never it's, it's very impressive and he's got all these beautiful guitars and just beautiful equipment and we go up and he um, i'm not going to tell how much he charges us per song but it is it's basically nothing and especially for his quality of production it is just insane like he's i feel like he's been a blessing that's been given to us hey um yeah well he he was a, a lecturer uh at sae for mm. a long time He's so humble. He doesn't even talk about that. You nope. know, he, he you, would, you wouldn't know his accomplishments. No, or what he's done. He keeps it real quiet. Yeah, he does. But um, you can hear it in in the production. Like when it comes back, we're like, and everybody comes up to us like, man, you, you guys are sounding great. Like, who recorded your stuff? You know. Mm. So um um, I think he wants to try get more work in there, but <laughs> the boys don't really want to give him away because they're like, oh, you know, he's like our little secret, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he used to be more of like a mastering engineer. I remember, mm. and then I think he, yeah, he taught me pretty much. Well, yeah, he was like, yeah, there, him and uh, yeah, there was a couple of others. Um, even like Dave from Villainy. I don't know if you know Dave Johnson. If you heard the name, I, um, he's yeah, the drummer yeah, of Villainy. Uh, yeah. Well, he wasn't. A, he was sort of a lecturer, sort of like a what was he called? I can't. Remember. He was like a a guest lecturer, so he'd come in and do mm. some stuff. Tight as drummer. Holy fuck. Yeah, Real Ruben good. has mentioned he he used to um. No one quite well, yeah. Yeah, so like a lot of those guys, but this is a little while ago. Yeah. But um, yeah, Villainy are, def are definitely like one of those. Yeah, get a gig with them maybe. Oh, jeez, that'd be a tough one, eh? Um, <laughs> Villainy, they just sort of disappeared. Like they, there was a few years where they were like, you couldn't get away from them. They were all over the radio, you know. Mm. Um, like the rock was playing like once every two hours or something, yeah, you know. Yeah. It was almost getting annoying. And then um, <laughs> now they're just they're like, you know, they've kind of vanished for a bit. Are they on hiatus or like? Did... I have no idea. I have not spoken to those, uh, any of those guys in a long time, mm. long time. I think the last time I saw them was at the King's Arms. So oh, that, actually, that's a long time. That's a long time ago. ago. <laughs> that's ancient history now. Yeah, like, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's probably the last time I, I saw them. Last time I spoke to Ruben actually was uh, about my studio here. He um helped me kind of. I, I bought like these uh uh panels and i was like you know i talked to him i'm like look i just need a little bit of help with um how i'm gonna do a little bit of soundproofing in here to make as good as i can and uh he helped me with that which is pretty cool oh, he's awesome he's such a great guy um i'm gonna tell him straight after this podcast that <laughs> i was having a chat with you um yeah because i just rung him two nights ago um because we were having um some issues in the band and I, I just rang him up to get his opinion on things because mm. you know, he's just such an experienced and knowledgeable guy you know it sure is um yeah so all, all our music is produced by him yeah 
Cool. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, good. Good stuff yeah. for the future for sure. All yep. right. All right. Outside of music. Uh, so you said you're a builder. Mm. Oh, I bring a builder apprenticeship. Yep. So you're quite a man on the tools, you reckon? Um, uh, <laughs> get in there. I'm getting there. Jeez. I, I definitely wasn't until I started. Um, uh, what happened was I was planning on going to Australia um, in like early 2020. Just um, for no particular reason. I just was going to go to Australia. and then, Wanted um, to change. Yep. And then, uh, you know, the... <laughs> The big thing happened in twenty twenty. Well, uh, I just I don't want to talk about that. But anyway, no, no, um, I don't need to. <laughs> and uh, you know, we were sort of like, oh, you know, like how long is this going to take? How many years is it going to be until I can go overseas? And um, I ended up working for my dad, who's a builder. Then just ended up signing the apprenticeship, and now you know, three three years later, I'm still doing it, and I've just got to see it till the end. How long is the apprenticeship? Um, I think you, I think it's about four years. Mm. They they reckon you can do it, and yeah, so it just just comes down to doing the bookwork and the knowledge, and you know, um, it's it's tricky. Mm. You know, it's tough. Like yeah, I used to be a technician for about five years. Yeah, um, doing audio visual, but sort of like electrical work, mm. and that was kind of on the tools. But there, <laughs> there's no qualification really. Like yeah. there isn't, there isn't. Like because my background is in audio. But then I kind of was doing live, and then I went into that, and then I got like yeah, it was all on the tools, mm. rigging and doing all that shit and i think one of the biggest things i struggled with on the tools one of them was stripping screws for a bit i was fucking shit at that yeah. um yeah not 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 very good <laughs> be a pretty bad builder no it, um, but no, i, I, I learned my lesson a long time i learned, I learned my lesson but yeah. that's one of the things i definitely uh yeah there was that and then also yeah one thing i don't miss because i don't do that job anymore was uh, when there's a crunch time and you have to like bust your balls to get jobs done mm. that was one, one one thing i uh, don't miss about working in that industry anymore yeah um i think that's why a lot of builders <laughs> start at like you know seven o'clock in the morning and we'll work yeah. till like five or six at night because they just yeah. need to get things done you yeah. know yeah um real work <laughs> yeah it is, it is real work uh, sometimes we yeah. do that not too much we're pretty cruisy like my old man it's just a you know it's a um there's only like three or four of us working for him you know it's um it's pretty chill and our hours he, he's getting old he's, he's 60 this year you know so we sort of do about seven and a half hours like full on like one break and then mm -hmm. uh, we kind of wrap it up you know and um which is all good but yeah the, the building industry it's like it's almost like learning a complete different language you know yeah. just just like the all names the tools and all the names all the tools everything. And, you know yeah, you got to be yeah, honest yeah. You, when you're using a tool you know you've also got to think am i going to cut my fingers off while i'm doing this yeah. you know am i going to be able to cut this am i going to damage anything else well, like, what's yeah. the worst injury have you seen any injuries like, never, like, 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 like people misusing tools because i've i've uh I uh, I never saw a grinder injury, but I heard loads of horror stories about grinders. Mm -mm. Oh. Grinders are the worst. Um, a lot of people because they've got guards on grinders, you know. Mm. But a lot of people take them off. They because, do, yeah. Um, I use I the first one I used was out of, without a guard. And I I used it and I was yeah. like, nah, fuck this. Yeah, I asked yeah. the guy I was with to do it. I'm like, nah. I remember we'll put it back on. <laughs> we were working with these sparkies once, and um, I had to cut some jib board out. And they gave me their grinder and it didn't have a guard on it. You know, my dad comes in and he sees me use it and he just starts swearing at me. He's like, put that down right now. Like, mm. never use a grinder without a guard. And, um, you can literally slice your arm off. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they, they, <laughs> don't, they don't grow back, a man. Um, nah, bro. And then um, he always says to me, he's like, if you cut your fingers off, there's no more guitar for you, eh? You know, and it's, <laughs> it's true. Um, but I've never seen any injuries, but I've, I've heard some stories, you know. Mm. Um, I, I heard I heard someone, he's, my dad said when he went to... Um, building tech back in you know whenever he started back in the 80s or something um he said some guy was using a skill saw and while it was going he put his hand underneath to check if the blade was you know like doing uh, the work the fuck? he cut his fingers off and my dad was uh... yeah and he, he tells me that one all the time and he's just he's, you know i mean come on like <laughs> Yeah, that's that you're asking. That's, that's fucking that's special. I've done some special stuff yeah, on tools, right. but that is that is real special. Yeah, I mean, I guess you you've got to learn to like make your brain work in like so many different mm. aspects. You got to think the level of precision as well. Yeah. When you when you, even as like something as simple like um I had like a party and someone like broke my broke my door and my mm. lock got fucked, so I replaced it myself. But I was again like the level of like precision with like having it nice and level, with oh, how yeah. your screws fit in, yeah. but then also not putting the screws too far in where mm. like you might fuck the wood and there's all that stuff you got to think about. Yeah, I mean, that's a very basic example. Well, but the yeah. stereotype of like builders and tradesmen, you know, really is you know that they're all just sort of like bogan guys, like and piss heads yeah, and shit. Yeah, they're all fucking smoking weed at work, drinking, yeah. blah, eating blah, blah. pies all day, eating pies all day, smoking all day. Yeah, like yeah. oh, let's go to the pokies. I'll do it. But the thing is, it's actually like 
it's insanely intense work oh, yeah. and it, it's almost Definitely. like um uh, it, well it is artistic in a way that you know everything has got to be perfect yeah. and lined up perfectly and it's got to look good to the eye and mm. like you said level plumb it, everything's you know um it, it's an, it's intense you know it is um, what was the hardest tool you had to learn you reckon oh jeez <laughs> <laughs> It took me ages to learn how to use a nail gun properly, eh, to get the oh, angles yeah. right, you know, because yeah. um, you could just, you can miss and nails will mm. stick out, like, you know, yeah. um, and you get some really funny shots, you know, where you don't have much room to move and you've got to try and make mm. sure that the nail's going to go where it needs to be. Like, it took me ages, eh, I've been yelled at a million times for screwing up shots with the nail gun, eh, but um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's all, this, you know, it's all learning experiences, there. Eh? Definitely. Oh yeah, sweet. Oh, that, that's cool. Yeah, I um, yeah, I, I really um enjoyed my time doing the trade work, and I learned so much from it. Mm. Um, like now, especially even because uh, I was doing like tech stuff, so like even like soldering and doing cables, and uh, not that I need to do data cables anymore, but it was cool to learn about all that. Uh, you know, those skills are so valuable. Like yeah, growing oh, up, yeah. I didn't really like use much mm. tools. That wasn't we didn't. Really, that wasn't really a thing at home. My yeah. my dad didn't really do it. And then uh, yeah, it's kind of like getting in there. I'm like, oh shit! Like now I have like a slightly more advanced knowledge than the everyday yeah. person. And it's nice as well when you go somewhere and then you can. I don't say if you're renting a place and you can be like, oh, what the fuck is like going mm. on here? And oh yeah, no, you know, it's, it's, it's um, so you don't get ripped off. You know, because it's so typical when you go renting and that. You know, just get some, some piece of shit and then it's like, man, like the railings coming off or like paint jobs crap mm. and you like just start picking out little things and it's like yeah i don't know it's, it's like a lot of that stuff is just so useful and save yeah. yourself money as well as for doing stuff at home lifelong knowledge mate you yeah. know the and, number um, eight wire you know all that i don't know i'm not i'm not know nothing about wires or electrical <laughs> stuff that is just not <laughs> i don't know that the, the saying new zealand number eight wire oh you, you never heard that before no i've never heard it what is it like, oh it's just like uh the the de- like uh the, i actually so I actually can't remember where the, exactly the number eight wire came from, but there's like a there's a book written about uh, it's an old one about number New Zealand number eight wire, it's just our mm. DIY culture um, that we have here. But it's like kind of a I guess it may be a little bit of an older term, maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, one, well, one thing used to always crack me up. Um, yeah, like one thing about the New Zealand attitude, especially on the site, is the she'll be right, which is a blessing and a curse. <laughs> I'm sure you've probably had an experience of that. Oh, we have them all the time. Um, <laughs> it's funny, just the she'll be right jobs. <laughs> just the other day we um just the other day we were we've just done this really nice deck quila decks beautiful right cool it. um and we've just built a pergola um to go above it oh, yeah. and um my old man was up there on a ladder doing you know he was chucking something on the rafters and that and his hammer dropped out of his tool belt fell on the ground and it hit the um a quila decking board put a big dent in it oof and straight away, so we're all like, okay, well, that's got to be replaced. Take it out. Just, you know, yeah. getting ready to put the replacement down. The owner comes out. The owner looks at it and does the, oh, she'll be right. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's the owner's dick. And, you know, yeah. like, it was, so that was just a couple of days ago I had to experience that, you know. <laughs> um, but when it's when it's the person whose house it is and they're paying the money and they say, she'll be right, she'll be right. You yeah, know what I mean? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the paying yeah. customer. It's yeah. Like, yeah. All right. If you think it's all right, then. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, if you think it's, it's sweet, mate, whatever you say. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we just left it. It was good. Um, yeah, yeah, she, she'll be right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit. Uh, it's kind of like um, I, I have like two very split sort of opinions about the she'll be right um attitude in New Zealand. But like mm. um, I, I, you know, there's a part of our culture and sort of there's a lot of that. It's quite can be kind of funny, but then at times it's sort of like you don't want to deal with things. So I think like, it's, yeah, it's laziness. It's it? just like that. She'll be right. Oh, yeah. I just don't want a bar of that. I don't want to deal with it. Uh, and that's not just in like building. That's on bigger things. I, I find with everything people yeah. as well. Mm. It, it comes into our, um, actually into our music too. You know, like um, it, I'm the kind of guy, like I feel like I must be a perfectionist because I, I, I listen to our music and I'll be like, this needs to change. This is not good enough. You know, and like we'll do a, we'll do a gig and I'll, at the end of the gig, I'm just like, this is not sounding good. Like this is embarrassing. And you know, a couple of the boys in the band are just like, ah, ah yeah, it's all good, man. Like she's, she's all right. You know, like mm. it's like, yeah, just chill, man. Don't, don't think about it too seriously. And, um, yeah, that's definitely a New Zealand thing. And <laughs> I think, I think maybe it's, um, it's an Aussie thing as well. It's an Aussie thing. Yeah. But, um, but uh, yeah, in New Zealand, mm. I, I think like that just really, uh, yeah, we are a bit lazy. And, but then I think yeah. it just like, uh, when it comes to, even like yeah, it goes into everything, right? Yeah, music to to work and like yeah, it's just like ah, oh, you know, fuck it, 
she'll be right. Or then it's like someone's talking about something serious and they're like, oh man, I'm really struggling at the moment. It's like, ah, oh, she'll be right, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, Which basically um, says like, shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, it's just like, yeah, no, well, that, that's a whole different talk about kettle of fish. That yeah, one, it is. But um, yeah, um, I, I think in the modern age, we're trying to come out of that kind of, you know, she'll be right attitude, but um, it's always going to be part of our DNA, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll see how that goes. Anyway, oh yeah, cool man. All right. Um, so, um, plans for the future of the bank of the EP. Mm. Got you got any gigs coming up? You guys have you guys done many gigs recently? Um, we've, we've done a lot of gigs. Um, but in recent months, we've we just had one two weeks ago actually. But our drummer Matt was away in Tokyo, so we got to fill in. Um, this guy called Paul Marshall. He used to play drums and the band Hangar 18 who were around in the late oh, yeah. 90s. Yeah, they were with uh, the feelers in that on the circuit. Um, he came and helped us out on that one. Um, we've got a gig coming up in April at Ding Dong Lounge with Shoeless, Capricor, and Esmond, who I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing with those bands. Um, apart from that, nah, I'm sort of, I'm more focused this year on trying to get our live craft down, you know, like I don't... Rehearsals? Yeah, rehearsals and like... Um, I think, you know, like our Spotify stats are looking pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think we just cracked over 2,000 monthly listeners and our, nice. late, our latest song's got over 5,000 streams already. Yeah, it's been like playlists of a bit. Yeah, um, it's only been out a few weeks. So I'm, I'm, I think we've, you know, we're pretty sweet with our recordings and that. But I, I think we sound good recording-wise, but live, I don't think we come across that great. Like I'm just, just the cold truth of it. And I think um, we've got a lot of areas to work on live. Um from all aspects from like you know guitar tones to backing vocals to you know stage presence and that so um i wouldn't mind maybe this year only doing like a gig say every six weeks right you know um and then just making sure that when we do do those gigs it's great and people walk away going like this is awesome you know like these guys mm -hmm. are awesome and then when we do another gig six weeks later they want to come back and see us again because um i went and saw capricor I don't know if you've heard of them. Are they okay? So they're um they're a fairly new band. They don't have any music released just yet. Um, I was in Ding Dong Lounge a few weeks ago. Jacob was with me too, and we just walked upstairs and saw them. And it's not their music isn't even something that I would really listen to, but like just their live performance and how they are on stage and how they just bring the music across was just captivating. And I was just standing mm. there and I was like, this is awesome, you know. And I would. I would happily go see them again. And that's, that's what I want people to do when they come to see us. And I don't think that's coming across just yet. So, okay. Yeah. That's quite a, yeah, quite a self-critical. Nice. It nice. is, but it is it's good. It's, it, eh? Well, you know, um, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that like, if I get critiques, um, I will listen and I will try to work on it. You know, I don't, I don't get defensive and then just go, Oh, you've been an asshole kind of thing. I'm like, no, okay. I understand. Um, and so I just ask people, like, um, whether it be, you know, people like uh, Ruben or, you know, um, other musicians or even it just people like my mother who come to the gigs. I'm like, well, what do you, what do you think? Like, what do you, what do you take away? If, 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 you know, if I wasn't your son, if this was just a band that you came to see, what, what would you think of this? And, yeah, we just get told that our, our image, like what we wear on stage doesn't really blend and um, sometimes the backing vocals are off or, like, my guitar's not sounding that flash and... Mm. Um, yeah, I think though one of the best. Uh, I had a podcast with Lee from Crooked Royals. If you heard of them, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he came on. I've known him for a long time, and he because uh, I've seen them grow and they're doing amazing now. Yeah, they're doing but, really um, good now. But they uh, they got a firm word, I think, about how they were on stage, about how you move in and out of the members and how you move around mm. the stage and how each member will move. So like the audience can kind of direct their attention a little bit yeah. to like the different members as they go across the stage. I found that really interesting how they like that, that was a part of, uh, you know, what they put into their performance, literally like running up and down. I mean, there's two vocalists, so they can kind of do that. But. Are, they, are they the ones that just toured with Periphery? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, funny enough, the other night I saw a video of them performing to the Periphery crowd mm. and they looked 
fucking awesome on stage, man. Like yeah. they were great. They were like, they look was, amazing. And yeah, um, yeah. It, it, so that's, that's interesting to hear that there was a point where they, you know, well, they, they, they got like a, yeah, well, I mean, they were a local, they, they played locally for a long time. And, uh, even like, um, they played the, yeah, I still remember I would say on the podcast when they played their first gig with my band at the time. Yeah. That was a long time ago, but they've, they've been around for a, like quite a while and it's kind of, it's really cool to watch. Same, same like them, like Caridian and a few others, mm. like in those international slots, like hardworking bands, those guys work mm. very hard. Um, oh, and they, all, yeah, very professional. Yeah. Very professional. Yep. From um, everything. And their guitarist Jake is a fucking machine. Jesus Christ. And I, can't, I, well, I can't play like that. <laughs> I, I just love it, man, because like, you know, this sort of music is very, um, I, I wouldn't even call it like mainstream really. You know what I mean? It's, it's definitely. It's metalcore. Yeah. It's metalcore, but like, you know, so there's a particular audience for metalcore. You can't go to a party and chuck on metalcore. You know what I mean? Like. Depends um, on the party, but most parties, no. Yeah. No, but like, you know, yeah. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, party, yeah. You it's, can't yeah, that it's um, the, the, yeah. And so it's awesome to see them actually succeeding and doing well and getting to play with international bands and that. It's awesome. Like. Mm. Um, I think that comes down to uh, the day and age that we're living in though with the internet, you know, like helps big time. Um, I actually kind of feel sorry for the bands sort of like, you know, who came before the internet, like even especially in the last 10 years, because now we can release a song with no record label and like people in the States can hear it and listen to it, you know, mm. whereas back in the day it was like you had to be signed to a label and the label had to push you over and, you know, the other countries to get you heard and that. So yeah, that really changed. Um, I noticed that really changing the early 2010s. That was when I really noticed it change. Mm. Uh, when I was in like one of my first more professional bands, like we released, I was on Reverb Nation. Yeah, like I remember that, Reverb Nation. Releasing yeah. music on that. And then um, there was like a SoundCloud and all yeah. this, but getting on Spotify was different. I was there. The first one I heard of was Distro Kid. So that mm. was the one mm. where you, um, do you guys use, um, what's the New Zealand one? DRM. Do you guys use them? Yeah, or do you guys use, use Distro Kid? Tune TuneCore. TuneCore? Yeah, yeah but there's heaps of them, right? Yeah, yeah. But like, that's like the first one I heard that would do, like you can use that to upload your music to like all of the different platforms. Mm. And it was like, ah, oh, so not like getting my music on Spotify. But then it's like, I've talked about this before in here, but it's like the supply of music is huge now. Yeah. Which is cool, but how are you going to be able to stand out from well, millions of songs uploaded per day? Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I think I think it can come down to two factors. One, your music's either just fucking awesome and every time someone hears it, they're like, this is great and it stops them in their tracks, right? Secondly, mm. I think it's more um, keeping your songs to, like, I, I'd say we have a very mainstream sound. Like our song, you know, like I mainly put focus on when you say Catchiness. mainstream, you're talking about like uh, '80s mainstream, or yeah, you're talking just, about just, just like very current... pop influenced. You know, like um, re- you know, like regardless of what the song is, whether it's our heavy songs, whether it's our softer songs, or whatever, it, it's, there's, it's, there's, a, there's a hook that's going to get you within about a thirty seconds to a minute. You know, and I always hear that when people hear listen to our music, they're like, oh, you know, they are very catchy. The melodies stay with me after I've heard the song. You know, and um, that's what I, I want to do. You know, like some people have come up, they came up to our guitarist, Jacob, and they're like, oh, you know, you guys are sounding a bit like poppy. Why don't you try to be a bit more alternative than that? And it's like, well, I, I just want to make a lasting impression on people. Interesting. You know? I listen to music and I don't think pop at all. You don't think <laughs> pop? No. no. But um, my, I guess how I think about pop is, uh, I know, because when you say mainstream, yeah. I'm like 2024 mainstream, I guess that's what I think about. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not talking like top 40. I'm more, I'm more just meaning like, um, well, you know, you, you said you listened to Playtoy and you, you know, you remembered some of the lyrics and you remembered the, you know, what the song was about and all that. Cause you know what I mean? It's, it's just something like that. I kind of want it to have a lasting. Have a hook. So yeah. Then. You know, cause like, I got to say like <laughs> Pearl Jam just dropped a song the other day. Right. And, um, I've heard it probably seven times now and I couldn't sit here and tell you how it goes. Right. Cause it, it, it just didn't like the melody of it just didn't, it just hasn't stuck with me for some reason. You know what I mean? Like it's not a bad song. I enjoy it when it comes on, but yeah, I, I don't know. So, um. Uh, I guess I guess that's the only way that we're we're gonna try cut through is just make music that people are gonna remember hearing. But it's definitely a tough battle, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, for sure, for yeah. sure, for sure. Oh, cool, man. All right. Um, I will probably. I think. What's our time? Do 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 do. Uh, oh yeah, probably. Um, we'll just do some uh quick fires and stuff. I have yeah, like yeah. little quick fire questions, and sure. uh, they're not always that quick though. But I'll uh, I'll, I'll shoot you some stuff for it. All right, let's go with strangest gig experience for Holy Crime or in general. Oh, uh, in general. <laughs> in general. Oh, uh, uh, let's do both. Let's all do right, both right, with, with um, Holy Crime. What's the weirdest experience you had at a, uh, playing a show? 
Um, could be an audience member. About, could that, be about, about, this, about this time last year, we got to open for Hello Sailor, right? Um, nice. Down in uh, the White Hat TNC. And it was a sold out gig. We played to like 500 people and that, you know, our egos were through the roof. Anyway, and then next week, um, our bass player, Tommy, he, he's part of a rugby club. He was like, oh, you know, we're going to have a party at the rugby club. The boys want you to come and play your set. So we're like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to all ego from Hello Sailor. We get there, we play our set. It doesn't go down well. The rugby boys start coming up. So it's play wagon wheel. Oh, we, we, did, we did it yeah i know i, I know that, yeah. i know I, yeah. so anyway so and i was i didn't want to do it but we did it so anyway i started playing wagon wheel and there's two versions of wagon wheel right yeah. there's um darius rucker darius rucker and an old crow medicine show i learned the old crow medicine show version which is in g jacob yeah. learned uh the darius rucker one which is an a mm. so we started playing and we played playing a different case but like the the crowd didn't care that was singing mm. along and we ended up playing it about three more times that night <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah why do people like i've talked about it on here before how much i don't like it i don't i don't get it i think it's like i don't get it it's herd mentality i think you know it's sort of like um is it a know, meme at this point yeah i guess it's a meme but i think everybody just you know like once again it's a song that you hear once or twice and you remember it you know what i mean mm. and like you can sing along and if everybody else is singing along it just you know i think you end up doing it i mean i personally i i'd never want to hear that song again in my life but um <laughs> <laughs> they they loved it and that we ended up doing it three times you know like <laughs> our, our actual serious music just and that was strange it was just such a and going from the hello sailor gig to that within a week was just such a you know yeah right a, a, a knock to the <laughs> senses i guess say so, but yeah that was probably the most bizarre thing we've done so far yeah what about okay what about at a gig like it could have been going to a show okay um <laughs> it's like, i was at blind spot at trust arena 2022 um <laughs> I went into the bathroom and there's all these guys standing around in the circle, mm. right? And, you know, obviously I just, I was, I was curious as to what was going yeah. on. So I had a look and there was this guy standing in the middle. He had his trousers down and he had his, you know, manhood in his hand. And he was just, check this out, everybody. Take a look at this. It's beautiful, isn't it? And there were all these guys standing around like admiring it, complimenting him and all that. And I, as soon as I looked, I was like, the f- <laughs> fuck? I walked out and I was like, I went to my friends. I was like... <laughs> How do I even explain this to them? Like what I just saw. Like, yeah. So that, that, that stuck with me for, um, probably strangest experience at a gig. Yeah. Fuck. That is quite a, that's a weird one. Yeah. That was weird. Like, you know, like um, 10 dudes just looking he, at some guys. He, he, he'd been blessed. I'll get, I'll, I'll give him that. It, you know, it was, it was decent. I guess decent. That's, why, I think that's why he was showing it off. But, um, yeah, that was, I, I didn't really know what to make right. of that. Oh, eh? yeah. <laughs> oh. that's, Oh wow, yeah, that's yeah. a that's a good one. Yeah, I know. Oh, it might be one of the best ones I've heard. Oh, uh, okay. Solid. That's a so that's that's fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blind spot too. Because like, I've had like a yeah, that's a because like um, blind spot is not exactly like a out there band. No, uh, you know when yeah. it comes to you know like some like crazy metal shows mm. or maybe some really wacky alternative bands, you might see some stuff. But surprisingly for me, I always find the rap gigs have the weirdest shit that happens. Yeah. Yeah, like just. People are like, it's a very different audience, obviously, but people mm. are way more turned up, um, way more fights for one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just stranger experiences I've had. I went to listen in, not last year, but the year before. Mm. Who was um, playing there? That was, was like, like um, was that rapper? Was it? Uh, oh, God. Fuck, I can't even remember all their names. There's like a guy, uh, Dave from the UK, that rapper. Yeah. It was like the grime stuff. And there was. Uh, uh, I mean, they all just sound like Stormzy to me, to be honest. Yeah, a yeah, lot of yeah. that. Um, oh, Central C, he yeah, was there. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and the British, uh, the British guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of that stuff. And yeah, I just like yeah. it's just like it's a very weird vibe because it's very like it's quite aggressive, mm. like in the crowd, like people like don't fucking touch me. Yeah, yeah. Like, but you have, but you're in a mosh pit, like you have to, <laughs> like you have yeah. no choice. Do so you, it's interesting. Do you like what's your main style of music that you listen to, like? These days, um, I would say I listen to a lot of um, kind of like electro funk or like I listen to like a lot of, uh, I still listen to like metal. Yeah. I used to listen to a fuckload of metal and then rock, but now I don't know. I just, I just, I'm sort of over the show. Do you, would you say you listen to a lot of rap and hip hop? No. Yeah. So that's (laughs) what I I mean. So like, I I, I went along to the gig with uh, with a couple of friends and like, I was like, I'm interested to check it Mm. out. Because it's I always I'm always down for new music and whatever the genre is, but uh, some of them some of them the rap is cool, 
but then it's like uh, the vibe at a, like a rap music festival is very different from even like an alternative electro. Yeah. It's a metal show. Like people are obviously intense, but everyone's hyped up and generally pretty polite. Yeah, and it's quite like a family vibe. Yeah, because you know, yeah. everyone's a bit odd, yeah. right? And then there's electro, like drum and bass, uh, which is everyone's on drugs. So there's that. Mm. And then uh, those are the ones that, you know, I've sort of been more to those styles. And yeah, then, I've uh, been heaps of those too. Yeah, but... Gigs, yeah. But then, like, going to rap at some, um, yeah, it was uh, definitely, like, people in the bathroom just, like, yeah, I mean, just the amount of drugs going on at rap shows as well is another one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck, yeah. Or just random, yeah. Or, like, just people coming up to you and just, like, uh, just getting weirdly aggressive about nothing. I had a few of those moments. A guy came up to me to fight me outside the bathroom. I'm like, why? Yeah. I just, yeah. just want to go to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm just like, yeah. what are you doing? Probably on crack or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, I... and, and like the gang member influence has a bit of that. Mm. So it's, mm. it's like, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it's like quite, quite interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, people just come up to you and start telling you like their life story. But that does happen sometimes at DJ gigs when people are at raves and they're just like, bro, I love you, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I think it's because so obviously you don't listen to rap and hip hop too much. Neither do I. Like, you mm-hmm. know, I do, but it's, it's, uh, you know, a, a proper rap fan would look at me and think I was awful. Like, you know, I just mm-hmm. listen to the mainstream stuff, the big hits. Sure, sure. So, but I reckon like, so if I went to a rap gig, I would just feel out of place and that's not mm-hmm. my, you know. And um, maybe that's what it is because I've known people who have gone to um, rock gigs with mosh pits, mm. and they they are like this is like it's like alien, eh? It's like yeah, alien like yeah. they're like this is crazy, like this mm. is so like there's all these big buff guys, you know, rocking mm. around like pushing each other, and like they get you know, and I'm like this is normal, like, you know, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think it's just um if you're not in that scene, it's always going to be a little bit <laughs> different, but yeah. It's always interesting when you get like the cross the crossover stuff. I think one of the funniest ones I remember seeing was um Thirty Seconds to Mars. Yeah. quite a long time ago and that was at the time of like sort of the height of their i guess popularity mm-hmm. so there was like all the pop fans yeah had the bogans yeah and then you had like the kids <laughs> so then it was and then like metal heads and shit yeah, and yeah. it was just like the funniest crowd it was so weird it was like all these kids who were like real excited mm. and then you have like proper bogans mosh pit throwing fucking elbows yeah. <laughs> and i was just like oh, this is interesting <laughs> Yeah, they, they they definitely crossed a, like a wide range of uh, mm. fan bases. Actually, yeah, I'll thirty seconds to Mars. Yeah, is it like um, I don't know if they still they still doing stuff, but I don't think they'll. I don't know. Jared Leto is more like act. I can't believe that guy's fifty. That's crazy. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I think he's into some strange stuff. That guy. He's eh? a vampire. Like, yeah, I um. <laughs> is he a vampire? I'd say oh, geez, I wouldn't put it past him, man. I would not put it past him, man. <laughs> he he is. He he's an out there dude. Yeah. Yeah, and like who know how long has he been around for? I mean, he could have been around for. Well, the years. band actually started in like the early nineties, <laughs> which is also crazy. <laughs> and then insane. he was in like all these movies, and then uh, they didn't really get popular probably till the two thousands. Yeah, and then it's just, just yeah. like, But then he's like such a massive actor as well. I mean, yeah. that Joker role wasn't very good. But, nah, but like huge. But, he's been in some great films, and um, of course, yeah. Fight Club, amazing. Yeah, and, and then and, was um, it uh, Dallas Buyers Club? Was that? Yeah, and he was in um, what Requiem for a Dream and um, American Psycho. Uh, yeah, American Psycho is yeah. awesome. Love yeah. that movie. Um, but that's like, like too real that, like that's kind of scary to watch now it's a bit too real yeah I, I, it's sort of ruined for me because of all the memes that have come from it a lot know? of memes yeah like uh, shit like, and so it's, many. it's consistent as well like it yeah. wasn't just a passing meme it's all the time you know so yeah. I watched it again recently and all I could think of was the memes the memes yeah, yeah. I'm like, uh, I think my favourite scene from that is still like the business card scene yeah, yeah. I love that scene but that's so legit because I, I, I work in like marketing now mm. so I'm kind of in like the corporate world and I'm not going to lie that uh, that happens yeah, it's like, like, like a, um, not not the business card, but like versions of that like behavior. Yeah, and I'm just like, this is weird. I, <laughs> I get that in music too. I call it like silent rivalry. You know, where like you know bands will be talking and going like, you know, oh, look at this. Uh, I've had this amount of streams on my music, and then someone's like, oh well, I'm doing this. I've got this gig coming up, and everybody's kind of like, oh, that's awesome. But I think deep down, they're kind of like. Yeah, no, like fuck you. Like, yeah, oh, why isn't that right. me? You know what I mean? Like, you got, oh, you're you, doing do, do you have any rivalries? Um, nah, not really. Silent yeah. rivalries. So, no? I don't know. I guess I mean, um, Boondocks. You know, like oh, I, yeah. I like I look at them and they've you know just risen so high in such mm-hmm. a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not so much rivalry, but it's more like drive. It's like, man, you guys are doing so well. Like, there's you know, I want to do what you guys are doing. You know, they just sold out. Um, big fan yeah i went to it you went to it Mm -hmm. yeah um our drummer uh went along and just i i could just see from the videos how cool of a gig that looks you know what Mm -hmm. i mean it looked electric like the crowd the bands the atmosphere it was a lot of fun yeah and i'm just like 
if these guys can do it, why can't anybody sort of thing? You know what I mean? It's like, and so it's more like motivation in a way, you know? Um, And it it just gives other bands hope, I think, you know? Cool. Yeah. 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 I I definitely say so. Mm. Yeah. I've had Scott on here a couple of times. He's a cool dude, man. Yeah. No, no. He's good. Yeah. We've known him. um, uh, We've known him since our first gig because we played a battle of bands together back in like 22 or something. Yeah. So we've, we've known him forever. Like, Sweet. Yeah. All right. All good, man. Uh, well, might just wrap it up there. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else you want to kind of shout out in the meantime? No, nah, just, um, you know, go go stream the new track, Nowhere Bound, who I was watching, and uh, wait for the EP. It's coming out very soon. Some good stuff's coming. All right. All right, bro. Cheers for coming on, man. It's been no Holy worries, Crime. All yeah. right. Thanks, everyone, for awesome, listening. Bro. Catch you soon. Bye.